Hey, it's Mark, and in this video, we're going to be talking about why cluster migraines trigger from foods. So my name is Mark from Migraine Professional. I used to suffer from migraines and headaches until about five years ago when I figured out how to beat them, and I've been migraine-free ever since. Now I teach other people how to do the same. And foods are a big, big problem, but they're definitely not everything. And so we really want to start by kind of understanding the mechanism. So we don't exactly know everything that is going on, but we do know in many cases specifically what may be happening for you. So we wanna go through a couple things um, and it really depends on you. Everyone is a little bit different. The, the, the same um, food trigger may be different for someone else with migraines. The, 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 same, the type of migraine may be different. The causes of the migraines may be different. The reason for going over the threshold may be different. The reasons um, that the trigger levels build up may be different. So there's a, a many, many different factors that are going into kind of determining what is going on with migraines and headaches and really nothing is set in stone. The body is very dynamic. It is not static. It does not want to be static. It should not be static and it should not be treated statically. It should not be approached statically. It's constantly changing. It's constantly um, changing its response where you wake up in the morning, your body might do best with a high protein, high fat meal. Uh, and then at night, your body it might do best with a, with a higher carbohydrate meal. It's very different and is dependent on your physiology, what you've done throughout the day, what time of year it is, your stress levels, your exercise levels, your the state of your gut health. These all impact your, your foods and your food triggers and your migraines. So make sure if you like this video to hit the subscribe button. And the first one is inflammation. So if the foods are more inflammatory than they are anti-inflammatory or not, then it's gonna cause a problem. It's gonna create inflammation in the body. It's gonna add tax to the systems because they have to compensate for it. They're, your body is gonna to have to pull out resources to even out the score. So you wanna make sure you take that into account and you're kind of balancing your diet so that you're not eating too many uh, inflammatory foods, foods that are, that, are, that are fried and processed and packaged and high in omega-6s and um, have, have artificial trans fats and things like that. You wanna make sure you avoid those and that you're eating an anti-inflammatory diet as a whole that's generally a, a organic, whole food, wild, um, pastured and grass-fed diet in general. So the next one is food particles. So what happens with food particles is that if you are, and really understandably, most people in the, the developed world um, are, are starting to develop some level of leaky gut. So leaky gut is when the gut starts to become permeable. And normally uh, the, the cells of the gut should just be taking in nutrients and then transporting it into, into the blood into, and then into the body and those nutrients should be used and um, turned into tissues and used for repair and things like that. But what starts happening is that the, the gut actually starts to become leaky because of damage or infections or dysbiosis or herbicides and pesticides and fungicides and there's all manner of things or stress. There's all manner of things that kind of impact the, the gut and the microvilli, and what happens in the lamina propria of the microvilli, if they get damaged, they will actually start to release zonulin, and zonulin starts to pull apart the cells inside of our gut, and it starts to leave holes, and then this starts to allow the food particles to get through uh, if those food particles aren't being broken down by our digestive acids and uh, bile and enzymes, then these whole food particles are getting into our gut and they're getting through this gut wall, they're getting into the bloodstream, into the lymphatic system, and they're starting to cause immune reactions. So if they're getting through our leaky gut, and if we have leaky gut, they can. The, it's very common that we will also have leaky brain. So then these food particles are getting into our body and our immune system will start going haywire, trying to clean up, clean everything up, attacking things. And then if they're getting into our body, and then they could be getting into our brain. And then that could be creating inflammation in the brain. So you really wanna be careful. You wanna make sure your food is digesting properly. So food particles, that's one of the pieces. 
and then we enter into the GB, the gut-brain axis. So the brain and the gut are constantly talking, they're constantly communicating. There's actually more information going from the gut to the brain than there is from the brain to the gut. It's a, a super highway of information, constantly being exchanged, constantly modulating and changing what is going on. So often this happens through the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is one of our main nerves that they communicate through. And there's actually much more information going from the, the gut into the brain. And it really shows how if there is a problem going on in the gut, it will make a problem in the brain. It will create um, more oxidative stress than the body can handle and create neurogenic inflammation, create brain inflammation, create all of these different problems. It can completely destroy the body. It's an infection. Uh, just like having an infection in your thumb, you could lose your arm. If you have an infection in your gut, you can lose everything else. So the gut brain axis and then adrenal. So if you're burnt out, your body has much less tolerance to deal with foods. If you're exhausted, if your your adrenals generally make your stress hormones, they, they wake you up and they make your fight or flight response and they allow you to function throughout the day. But if your adrenals are tapped, if they're not functioning properly, if they're going to dysfunction or they're exhausted, then you start running into problems. The body cannot deal with as many stresses. It can't take those stresses on. And then it can't deal with as many foods. The amount of, of food tolerance starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller the more burnt out you get. So often people will start removing foods, removing foods because they're finding sensitive foods and then they get very um, kind of obsessive about their food choices because they get a little improvement. But then this obsessiveness over the food choices starts to create even more stress on the adrenals, even more stress around food. And the smaller diet, less nutrients starts to create even more problems. So you, re you really want to deal with this with a experienced practitioner, someone who's, who's um, trained in, in nutrition and, and adrenal health. And then, of course, your abdomen, your abdominal muscles, and this is especially important if you're getting uh, tension type headaches, um, that, and you're getting headaches that, that have a lot of neck component to them, a lot of muscular tension components to them, uh, because when you're uh, eating foods that are not supportive of your health, if they're inflaming your gut, if they're causing problems in your gut, then your abdominal wall will start to deactivate to allow room for your organs, to allow your organs to breathe. And this is going to create a lot of problems. It's going to destabilize everything, your spine, your neck, and it's going to create a lot of problems. It's going to, it can aggravate many, many issues, especially neck issues and muscular issues. Then we have central sensitization. So like I've talked about in the fibromyalgia video, central sensitization is a process by which your body, once it starts to get pushed over its threshold, everything, every stressor that happens after its threshold is increasingly more uh, problematic because it starts to become sensitized. The central nervous system becomes sensitized and then every problem after that threshold becomes even more of a problem and even more of a problem. Whereas, so maybe today, chocolate, you had some chocolate and you maybe just got a little headache. Um, tomorrow, you're not rested. You're already triggering your migraine and, and then you have some chocolate and you're in a full out uh, vomiting and, and you're, you're having a, a diarrhea attack and it's really causing more problems. So it's a process by which your body um, gets hypersensitized to uh, stimulants and to stress that is going on, central sensitization. So these foods that we are eating, they can start to aggravate this problem and then kind of create this snowball effect where everything starts getting progressively more worse. So we want to, you know, take a stand, drop our boundaries, draw the line in the sand and say, no, I'm going to start uh, pulling it back. I'm going to start doing things that are really um, rejuvenative and helpful and, and start repairing my body and my brain. Then, of course, like we talked about in the other video, histamine tyramine, uh, and see the article on the histamine migraine connection for more detail, kind of get into depth. Um, histamine and tyramine, they are generally, a, a certain percentage of the popul of the migraine population is very susceptible and, and very much affected by histamine and tyramine containing foods or histamine and tyramine releasing foods. And so they will do much better kind of cutting these out or supplementing to improve it or kind of dealing with whatever's causing their histamine issues. 
So really, it's there is no one answer. There is no one thing for uh, what food is causing the problem or why the food is causing the problem. There are a number of different factors because the body is so integrated, because it's so dynamic, and because there are so many different things at play. You really want to make sure that you're looking at all the different pieces. You're addressing your whole, your body as a whole. You want to make sure that you're not just looking for the perfect diet or the perfect medication or the perfect supplement or that that magic pill because it doesn't exist. You want to make sure you're addressing everything. You're addressing it as a whole, and you're building your health back up. You're building it from multiple different areas. You're starting to kind of build yourself and and repair your body、uh, by addressing all of these different factors. Let me know. In the comments below, what is the biggest player in your food triggers? What do you think? What other kind of symptoms are going on that might point to one of these being the biggest kind of leader in、uh, creating your food triggers and triggering your cluster migraines? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from MigraineProfessional.com. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner. And if you want to learn more about migraines and headaches than you've ever known before, and understand what causes them, what creates them, and what you can do about them, make sure to go to migraineprofessional.com. Thanks.